Welcome to this gathering of praise and thanksgiving to the triune God. The Lord is our help and our strength. Jesus is our grace and truth, and the Holy Spirit is our comfort and counsel. We are the Meyer family, and this is Lombard Christian Reformed Church. Come, let us worship the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Just a quick reminder, if you are interested in helping, volunteering, serving, reaching out to the local community, I know that it is especially hard during this season as we are spread apart and there are limited contact opportunities. But you can still support the church and be involved in a variety of ways. For example, for these online worship services, we are always looking for help. So if you would like to submit a video of you singing a song, praying, reading your favorite psalm, sharing your testimony, and the list goes on, feel free to let us know because we would love to have you involved. In addition, the church needs help in other areas as well. So for example, we're looking for donations to the food pantry. So if you would like to help, just comment below or reach out to the church office and we will connect you to the right people and provide you with some more information. During this difficult season, we still want to be missional people caring for the kingdom of God, demonstrating Christ's love and reaching out to our neighbors. So I invite you to participate and continue in these ways to be involved. And thank you for what you already do for the local church. And thank you for what you will do in the future.
all together wonderful to Every day I look to you, how I long to see your face And I'm calling out your, calling out your name Every day I wait for you, how I long to know your ways And I'm calling out your, calling out your name I know you see my life from the inside out you see the hurt, heal me, spirit fill me Hold me closer, come and rescue me Every time I look to you, see your lovely face I'll be calling out your, calling out your name Lord, I know that there are times when troubles come to me. I need your arm to guide me, stay beside me, hold me closer, come and rescue. Every time I look to you and I see a lovely face, I'll be calling out your, calling out your name. day I wait for you, how I long to know your ways, I am calling out your, calling out your name, I'll be calling out your, calling out your name, I'll be calling out your, calling out your name, I'll be calling out your Calling out your name. A holy worship practice is together confessing our sin and receiving an assurance of God's forgiveness. I'll lead us in an ancient prayer of confession. I'll read it once so that you can hear the words and get familiar with them. But then I'll read it again and pause in between the lines so that you can fill in your own prayer of confession. We have absorbed rival gospels of pleasure, politics, and purposes that are really no gospel at all. And our hearts are corrupted. Our bad habits plant in us an unholy vision of the good life that tempts us away from the cross. Our confession time brings two kingdom graces. One is a severe mercy that we are not as good as we think we are. We are not entitled to be affirmed in congratulations for you doing you. But then there is grace. We are not slaves to sin. We are not children of darkness. We are not lost, but found in Christ. We belong body and soul to our faithful heavenly Father and Savior who forgives us and sets us free. So let's join now in this time of confession. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is nothing good in us. O Lord, have mercy on us, miserable offenders. Spare those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Grant that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of his name.
Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the desires and devices of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is nothing good in us. O Lord, Have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Grant that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of his name. Amen.
Human desire is a good gift from our Creator that has been corrupted by sin. In order to harvest the fruit of the Spirit from our lives, the Spirit must renew and reform our desires. Our scripture readings today are from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17, and Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18 and 24. They invite us to make a spiritual accounting of our desires and open our souls to the redeeming counsel of the Spirit. Let us take God's word to heart. From Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And from Galatians chapter 5. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. This is the word of the Lord. We're on our way to living a life that results in a harvest of the fruit of the Spirit. These fine and holy things are what we are made for. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, and generosity faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So far, we've confessed that left on our own, we have problems with living our lives for this fruit. And we learned about the word flesh, which pictures all the ways we want life and even God on our terms. So when we hear about the fruit of the Spirit, either we assume this is just one more religious task that just sets us up for failure, or doubt these as the good the Spirit makes them out to be. After all, how do patience and kindness and goodness pay the bills? How do faithfulness and gentleness make us happy? So then we learned about the word picture walk. Walk by the Spirit. And this pictures our freedom, our exodus out of slavery to the flesh. We are set free as children of the Father. So the harvest of this holy fruit in our lives is God's accomplishment by God's grace and power. This is what God is doing with our lives, growing and maturing this fruit. Walking by the Spirit means we live with great expectation that because Jesus is the God of the cross, He will transform even our worst into such delightful fruit. Walking is different from grabbing or insisting or controlling. It's not something we achieve. It's something we grow into while we trust and obey. That brings us now to the third word we have to come to terms with if we're going to be open to such a fruitful life. And that is the word desire. Look at verse 16 from Galatians 5. So I say walk 
by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. You see in verse 16, those three terms we've talked about all linked together. Flesh, walk, and now desire. And you see that fleshly desires and spirit desires are in conflict with each other. The revelation is that we have a say. We have a choice. We are not helpless in the face of desire. The heart wants what it wants because of the way we have shaped it by our habits and practices. But remember, we have been set free. We are children of the King. Look again at our Galatians verses. They don't say desire is bad, and the only way to live well is by becoming a person who has no desire. It says there are godly desires, as well as fleshly desires, that conflict with each other. And those who walk by the Spirit have it within them by the grace of God and the power of the risen Christ to crucify, that is to judge to put to death, to be rid of, not all desire, but the desires of the flesh. We now know by experience what's being called pandemic fatigue. We've been told to change our behavior for a long period of time without seeing real results from those changes, and we are weary. We're losing a sense that this was worth it, Two things happen to our souls along the way. First, our desire gets suffocated. We don't have things to look forward to. We can't do things that we love. What used to be delightful tasks requires so many extra steps, we give up. And then second, desire gets bent out of shape. We look for and even settle for cheap and easy substitutes that in the end leave us feeling empty and weary. This pandemic is giving us a picture of what sin has done to desire. C.S. Lewis summed up our condition by referring to the corruption of desire within us. He says, we are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Our desire has gotten bent and broken. So here, Galatians 5 invites us to the Spirit's desires that will lead to a beautiful and wondrous life harvest of good things like love, joy, and peace. How do we grow up in faith? By renewing and reforming our desires. The message is we are what we love. Jesus recognized this. The first thing Jesus said, recorded in the Gospel of John, as he ministered God's presence among the people, is a question. And the first thing Jesus asked was, what do you want? He doesn't ask, what do you believe? Or what do you know? But what do you want? And the last question the risen risen Jesus asked is the question to Peter, do you love me? The thing is, Jesus isn't the only one asking what you want. The documentary, The Social Dilemma, interviews the founders of social media and reveals that we don't just use our phones. Our phones and devices use us. In fact, they shape us and what we want. Daniel Hoverman confesses, if you're not paying for the product, then you are 
the product. And along the way, we hear these, these founders say, we want them, which means you and me, to keep doing this with their finger. And they make motions of, of the way we use our phone and, and touch screens. So that you are being programmed at a deeper level. Social media starts to dig deeper and deeper down into the brainstem to take over one's sense of self-worth and identity. Add to that, we are targeted from everything by music videos to Victoria's Secret to TV shows like The Bachelor that plant in us a certain vision about love. And they're shaping certain desires and expectations within us. Now, parents, do you think we're going to address those issues by knowledge and education? Those powers aren't working on our education and knowledge. They're working in a place deeper in our hearts and our bodies. And teenagers, by the way, all the things you're wondering about and that thrill your imagination and those feelings that you are sorting out, your grandpa and grandma wondered and felt the same things when they were your age and had to grow and mature and sort out true and false desire. The Holy Spirit is with you as it is with your grandparents. So because of all this, Scripture teaches, Proverbs 4, verse 23 is one of many verses, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it, meaning guard your desires, meaning pay attention to what shapes what you long for and your habits and practices that form what you delight in and desire. So, my invitation and counsel to you in the space and time this worship gathering gives us is for you to ask, what is it I really long for? If Jesus asked you, what do you want? Could you answer him? What would your answer be? If he goes on to ask you, do you love me? What can you point to in your daily habits and actions? See the problem? Most of us can't answer these questions right away. Most of us don't really know what we want. So most of us wander the wilderness in our lives instead of longing, desiring a better country, as the book of Hebrews puts it. We readily say we believe in God or we call Jesus our Savior, but do we love him? We need different habits, a new set of practices, being with different people together, sharing over and over again what is healthy and good to rightfully and wholly delight ourselves in the Lord. And God's promise is, as Psalm 37 verse 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So Galatians 3 teaches us, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. This passage speaks of intentionally choosing different habits and practices and doing so within the fellowship of the church where we receive prayerful support and faith mentoring. The verses use the word picture, clothe yourselves. This is a deliberate putting on, a measured, repetitive practice,
practice, something we do every day. Colossians is telling us how to renew and reform our desires. And the message is practice, practice, practice. And not just by yourself, but together, reinforcing that truth that we are chosen, we are dearly loved, we are forgiven and forgiving. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, you may not remember, but there was a time in your life when you couldn't dress yourself very well. I know some wives are looking at their husbands right now. <laughs> but I mean as a toddler. You wanted to dress yourself, but you wound up with both legs and one pant leg, or you got stuck in your shirt, or you put your shoes on the wrong feet. But now, look at you. You get dressed without thinking about it. You've been practicing a long time. We rarely think about dressing ourselves, except when it's some sort of occasion, like, like a date or a job interview or a church. Well, not so much church anymore. But the point is, you just do it. And by practice, practicing these virtuous habits, by seeing a situation and say, how can I be compassionate here? How can I exercise kindness here? How can I be humble right here? Practice, practice, practice. We put it on and it becomes who we are. Our desires, our delights begin to be renewed and reshaped by the Spirit. So what sorts of things should we be practicing in order to clothe ourselves? put on, exercise habits that shape our desires toward the fruit of the Spirit. The habit of worship forms and shapes our love toward Christ. Daniel Darling says in Christianity Today, in your congregation right now, children are singing words they don't know, listening to scripture they don't fully understand, and fighting wandering minds during a sermon while fidgeting because it is so hard to be still. They don't realize it yet, but the Spirit of God is planting a desire for kingdom living in them through yet another boring church service deep within their hearts. And teenagers, if you would count yourself in that company too, how about reflecting on what all this is describing about the good life? What do the song lyrics, the church language, the worship actions of confession and blessing, forgiveness, giving, praying, being together, what do those actions say about good delights and desires of life? What's the good life we are practicing here together, even though we stumble imperfectly at it? Don't ask, what did I learn today? Ask, what did I practice? What picture of the good life did the Holy Spirit give me here? It's as the body of Christ, the church, that we renew our loves, reorient our desires, and retrain our appetites. The Spirit changes what we want in the company of others being changed. Belonging together as church is important, not because of what we do, but in the doing, the offering, the giving, the listening, the praising and the thanking, even in the sharing of suffering, God is doing something to us, opening our hearts to delights and desires we never thought possible to want from life, yet now given to us. Life in the body is about being formed, reformed, reshaped. 
Sometimes as, as the body of Christ, we are challenged individually or collectively to say no. This is a hard challenge. Sometimes together we are called to commit to saying yes. And this could be equally challenging. But our loves are also shaped by times and seasons of abstaining, by times of doing without, fasting, as well as feasting. And now in these strange times, it matters more than ever that we be deliberate about our habits because the practices that we are falling into now during this pandemic are shaping what we love. Our evening practices, our weekend practices, our church, our Sunday practices. The pandemic is keeping us from one another, from the things Colossians talks about, admonishing one another, sharing in song and story together, So to practice the habits of the heart that delight in the fruit of the Spirit, intentionally choose some way to fellowship. You can reach out to someone and share a way that you worshiped, or how you gave, or where you sensed God's grace in your life. You can even share a prayer through texting. practices, little habits that form and shape our desires and renew in us a proper longing for all that the Lord delights in. Rachel Gilson had her own struggles. Looking back, coming through that journey, she says, God, as the first desirer, offers us another way. At the very best, our yearnings can be a picture of his yearnings, which pulse with goodness, energy, and even holiness. The world begs us to believe that our authentic selves are only found in giving in. It promises hero status if we submit to our attractions. Our desires whisper like a serpent in a garden, that there is no death in going against God's word. This serpentine tongue drawing us towards sin speaks a native language to each one of us and offers each a tailored temptation. But there is good news. Jesus really is more beautiful, more worthy, and more satisfying than anything else. So Jesus asks, what do you want? For the harvesting of the fruit of the Spirit is first planted in the soil of our desires. Amen. Though we are physically apart, we can unite together in prayer. So I invite you. Heavenly Father, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are the first and holy desirer. So made in your image, broken though it is by sin, but now redeemed in Jesus and his cross, we submit our desires to you. Make us holy. We pray, lead us not into temptation. And pray for those who face temptation, who struggle with addiction, and feel trapped in sinful desires. We remember your promise that we are no longer slaves to sin, but we are each a child of God. May that assurance of who we really are, for how great is the love you have lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. May that assurance strengthen the one who is single and not by choice, 
the one who struggles with their sexuality, the one whose gender is a burden to them, the one who has suffered abuse, the one who is lonely in their marriage. Spirit, make us a Christ-like family of God that welcomes and cares for one another and shares in the sorrow and suffering of one another. Whether single or widowed or married, in success or in failure, restless or peaceful, no matter the color of our skin, no matter the size of our checkbook or our intellect, that we each and all may rejoice in the grace of belonging as we seek first the kingdom of God and desire the righteousness of the King to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly together with you, O God. We pray for our nation and plead, Lord, for unity and peace. We confess how we have wasted your gifts and in prideful arrogance have not considered the plight of the poor or reconciled between the races or guarded the value of human life or cared for creation or rightly shaped the workplace or contributed to equity for all. And you have called your church to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, yet we are complicit in the darkness. Come, Lord Jesus, heal our land. Let peace and justice and charity begin with us. Hear our prayers for one another. We pray for the Jupp family today, for Joel, Caden, Emberly, and Violet, as they hold Ginny in their hearts before you. We pray with them for healing mercies for Ginny, that you would work beyond the ability and skill of doctors to grant her strength and wellness. And we continue to hold up before you, praying for a measure of healing. Uh, Pat Serrano, asking strength for each day in her treatment. And for Al Dominguez, that health continues to come back to him. For Hal Beatty, who needs some rehab. For those we know who are infected with the coronavirus. For Rick and Patty Hopp and their need for healing mercies. And for those isolated and lonely and all those with ongoing illness. We remember especially this week Barb and Staltynen and Jean Wassenaar and Joan Hoekstra. Those are who are widowed and in senior homes. Bring healing mercy to Kathy Wolf from Lawndale in her battle with cancer. And we pray for the ongoing ministries of Elam Christian Services, Chicago Christian Counseling Center, Roseland Christian Ministries, and our local home missions ministries. Bless the ongoing efforts and support of the sanctity of life here in our community and in our nation and throughout the world. For life is a gift from your hand. And so, Lord, strengthen ways for that to be protected in and through and around us. We have opened our hearts and souls to you, Father. Please take us up in your lap and hold us in your grace, that by faith we may sense the presence of Jesus with us and in us, and with confidence and courage, live out your many blessings with great thanks. Amen. Today's offering is for the Missions Fund. But before we pray, the deacons would like to thank you all for your continued giving. There are two ways you can continue to give. One is by mailing a check to church. The other is by the Giveify app. If you don't know how to use the Giveify app, Feel free to reach out to one of your deacons. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today to thank you for this day. We ask that you be with all our missionaries, both here in the United States and throughout the world. We ask that you keep them safe, 
and help them feel your guidance in this troubling time. In your name I pray. Amen. Please respond together with me as we receive God's blessing and remember that the love and the life and the person of Jesus goes with us as we go into the week that God gives us. And so, sisters and brothers, by the power of your spirit, we'll walk in the light, the beautiful light. In times of joy and gladness, we'll walk in the light beautiful light. In times of sorrow and despair, we'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Grateful for the light of your word, we'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Grateful for the gift of your church, we'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Called to witness to your love, we'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below.